Hello, my name is Kevin Pires. I am a senior applications engineer with Expo. And today I'll be covering IOLM real-time OTDR setup and testing. And so within IOLM, we have the option for real-time OTDR measurements, which is a really valuable tool if you're doing, um, if you're if you're doing some real-time troubleshooting. So today I am using the FTB1 Pro dual carrier with two different modules in there. So the module that we're concerned about today is my FTB X730C. Um, so we do have different 700C OTDRs, so whether it's a 720 or, or one of our other ones, the interface will be identical with the only exceptions of my unit might have different hardware and software features. Uh, but otherwise, what we're covering today should be fairly identical. Uh, so I already have IOLM up and running in the background because I wanted to take a reference trace for us. And so I'm going to go ahead and launch IOLM. And so I have IOLM launched here. And so this is a trace that I just took of some fibers that I have coupled together here in my office. And so we're gonna focus quite a bit on these two connectors here, primarily this connector over here on the right, uh, which is a Sam Charlie UPC connection that I have. And just for reference purposes, these are the values um, you know, that we see for these two connectors here. And so um, the numbers that I wanna remember is the amount of loss of that connector and roughly the amount of reflection of that connector, right? Those are the two critical parameters for connectors. Um, and so from here, uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm look up to the top right. All I have is a start button up here. I want the real-time option um, enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. So over here in the right, under user preference, this is where we enable the real-time OTDR option. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It takes us into this user preference screen. So under the general tab, Right there in the middle of the screen, we have OTDR real time. So we want to make sure and enable that. And as, as soon as I hit apply here, if you look to the top right, we now have what we're looking for, real time OTDR. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit real time. And so it's going to switch to the real time uh, OTDR option and then start testing. So it's testing from where I left off. So that's why everything's kind of keyed in here. But if I go to the OTDR tab in the top left, this is what the OTDR in real time looks like, right? Uh, just to give you an idea, I'll freeze the screen while I annotate this. This is our launch. This is an APC connector that's about, a, um, I think, 500 meters away or roughly that. Then I have a UPC connector. And then I have the end of fiber out here you know, near three kilometers. So this is what we're looking at here. And the things that we'll be focusing on is I'm going to show you how to evaluate this one connector here. And so going back into uh, uh, full-time acquisition here, there are two primary settings or three primary settings with the OTDR down here in the bottom left. You know, what wavelength you want to test, uh, what range, and what pulse width. So range is essentially how far to, to, to set the display range. You know, how long is your span? Where's the location you want to kind of focus in on? Pulse width is basically... Uh, power and resolution. So the higher the pulse width, the further you could test, but the further apart the connectors need to be or the splices need to be. So at five nanoseconds, I can detect two events that are very close together, uh, but I can't test very far. At 100 nanoseconds, I can test further, but the connectors need to be further apart, right? Um, and so those are the three primary settings that we have. Uh, if I want to switch between wavelengths, you'll see right now we're testing 1550. If I want to switch to 1310, it's as simple as just tap in 1310 down in the bottom left, and then now we're testing 1310. Most real-time testing that I do is in 1550 for worst-case scenario stuff. Um, and so from there, we can tweak the settings down. And so in this case here, you'll notice that we can see, you know, the end of fiber, and we can see the noise floor. So this is incredibly important, you know, if you want to shoot an entire span. You want to see the end of fiber, you want to see the noise floor. Um, and so you don't want this, this end to be too far to the left. So for example, if I were to set it at 20 kilometers, you know, we basically waste all of this resolution here and we can get some echoing uh, for, from our results. We want to optimize this as much as possible by dropping down the distance. So five kilometers. And then if I go to 2.5, you see it just runs right off the screen here, which is what we do not want, unless all we're concerned about is focusing on this connector, right? But in this case here, I want to see the entire span. So I drop that out. If you're shooting spans that are incredibly short, you can customize your distances here. So if I stop the trace real quick, 
down here in the bottom right, you know, we are able to hit that button and we can actually edit, you know, these, uh, these events here. In fact, I edited one earlier and I put in a half a kilometer. So you can see that half a kilometer in there, right? So you can see that half a kilometer um, right here, right? If I were to go back to default settings, you'll notice after I hit OK here that that five kilometer now disappears. So you can insert your own custom events. You're not going to be testing 400 kilometers anytime soon. So normally what I do is I go into this setting. I go up to the, to the range and I edit the, the longer ones that I, that I don't test. And then I change these to something that's more usable for me. So like half a kilometer. So now I have half a kilometer here, right? So in this case, we've, we've determined that five kilometers is a good range for us. Now pulse width, you know, if it's shorter, you'll notice that it's noisier. And so at three nanoseconds, we get really good spatial resolution, but we do not get very much distance. So as I increase my pulse width, I'm able to see it gets cleaner and cleaner. Now, you're never going to get the resolution that IOLM gets. And the reason why is because in real-time mode, we need far more pulse width because we're not doing any averaging. Where with IOLM and OTDRs, we average out the noise. Real-time, we don't. So with an OTDR, on this span, you can get away with 5 nanoseconds. But in real time, it's always going to be higher. So realize that you always sacrifice some resolution to test in real time. There's, there's really no way around that easily. So in this case here, I have my 50 nanoseconds set. I'm pretty happy. So if there's any changes to the fiber, so when I was a splicer, in a maintenance window, we would open up the splice, and then I would say grab the blue fiber, and I would slowly attenuate it, and my partner on the other side would tell me whether or not they see movement in real time. If they did, then I was on the right fiber, then I can perform my activities on that fiber. If it didn't move, then I let go, and it was in a controlled situation during the maintenance window. Uh, so that's one good way to do fiber identification. Another thing we can do with real time is we can analyze the data in real time. So up here in the top left, you know, we have the measurement tab. So we go ahead and click the measurement tab, and that turns on the markers. So there's a there's four markers that are being used. You have an auto markers of A and B, so under, uh, uh, lowercase a and B, and then uppercase a and B for the, for the inner markers or the, or the major markers. If I just want to measure distance, so for example, if I want to measure distance from my last known location, like this connector at a, at a hut, to this open in the fiber, so to a backhoe sticking up out of my cable, so the distance from my last known location to my open is 1.5 kilometers. And so that's where my open is at from that last, last location. So it's very useful for that. Um, if I want to measure attenuation per kilometer, you know, for the entire span on either side of my launch cable, then I can basically go over here and click on the section information. So I can click on section, and this will give me section diagnostics and analytics. I hit that. And now I can see my loss per kilometer right here. Now, of course, it's a little high because I got a short run with a lot of connectors in it, right? But this gives you an idea what it is. And then the loss from, from A to B is about 1.7 dB. If I want to look at events, specific events like splices and connectors, remember what the loss was for that particular one that we talked about before. So this connection right here in the middle, I'm going to move all my connectors, all my markers closer. And keep in mind, I'm going across VNC, so sometimes moving markers with the latency of my Wi-Fi is, it can be a little challenging. But in this case right here, so far they're cooperating, so we're in good shape. So here's how you set your markers for what we call four-point event loss, or four, you know, four-point LSA. You need four points to measure attenuation uh, and reflection at a very specific event, like a splice or a connector. So in this case here, I want to measure this UPC connector. So what I'll do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can really see what I, you know, to set my markers. So I want to measure this big connection here, so this big spike. I want my A and B connector to be as close to the event as possible without touching it. So on either side of the event here, this is basically roughly where I want my, my inner markers. My outer markers, I want these outer markers to be as far out as possible without crossing another event. And so I'm going to go to the left, and just before I cross the other event, I'll stop right there, right? And then I'm going to go 
to the right marker and the right marker, I kind of want to do the same thing. I want to set it as far out as possible without crossing another event. So in this case, I don't want to hit the open. So I go out as far as I can. And then I'm going to zoom back out. And then here's my measurement in real time down here at the bottom. This is my real time measurement down here, down here, down at the bottom. And so if you remember from the IOLM, it was 0 0.293 of loss with negative 42.8 dB of reflection. So the newer OTDRs, the hardware that we use within OTDRs and IOLM is really, really um, a cutting edge uh, technology. We have much better diagnostic and, and DSPs to keep up with the challenges of, of uh, measuring. So you can see in real time how we can measure. And I can go to that connector and I can unplug it and try to clean it to get better reflection. Say I want to get to neg 50. Um, I can go over there and clean it. In real time, you can watch that activity. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that fiber real quick. So I'm going to step away from my computer, give it a quick, cheap cleaning, and then come back. And then we'll see if it got any better or worse in some situations, right? So give me a second. Ah, this is pretty outstanding. So, so you saw me disconnect the connector and then I cleaned it really quick and plugged it back in. I didn't do a very good job of it, obviously. And this is why I'm an instructor and not a technician anymore. But you notice I made it far worse. Um, and so, you know, I can go in there and try to clean it up again, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, so you can see some of the powers and features of using real time uh, OTDR functionality with an IOLM. Um, you know, there's a uh, there's some great features and applications that you can use to troubleshoot, but, uh, but that was it in a nutshell. Uh, my name is Kevin Pires. I am with Expo. Thank you very much for your time.